so though i have i have a variety of what to present but today i thought i should speak something only about mutation breeding because uh, many times young generations they are carried out by the new techniques and uh, new methodologies but though this is era of genomics and genome editing but uh, still this mutation breeding technique is very well uh, what you can say useful technique for crop improvement just for the benefit of the student community i thought i should uh, make a presentation on this aspect so that uh, they can gain some knowledge on this area because if you say mutation breeding nobody is practicing today except some few uh, institute or uh, lab so that is the idea i thought uh, i will just focus only on the mutation breeding aspect which is also a core area of our institute uh, for developing crop varieties uh, so my title is the role of radiation induced mutation in pulse improvement i am just going to speak how it is being used in pulses uh, rather than uh, all other crops and because today i thought uh, this uh, axias thesis is on pulses so i thought i should speak on only on pulses so as a students uh, uh, teachers uh, kindly excuse me for this is for only for the students you might have gone through your uh, mutation breeding course and uh, uh, you know that mutation breeding Uh, can be used for gen creating new genetic variability in crop plants when there is no uh, vari variability available in the germ plasm and also you can go for mutation breeding when you want to improve one or two unique traits in a uh, very good variety that is elite variety or you want to break a tightly linked character or the gene then you can go for mutation breeding and to improve vegetatively propagated crops this is the only way to improve uh, create genetic variability in uh, vegetatively propagated crops so, so you might have studied there are uh, different uh, mutagens which can be used for inducing mutations physical chemical biological and uh, of course in the physical uh, we have x rays gamma rays electron beams and accelerator particles basically the mutation breeding is increasing the uh, frequency of mut mutants in the population that is what we are doing but if, though in uh, nature it is spontaneously happening in the Uh, rate of one in one million. We are just enhancing the frequency in one in one thousand. So that is what we are trying to do with these mutagens uh, in the population. So I will just uh, go only with the radiation or the physical mutagen because the we are just mainly focusing. Our institute is focusing on the useful use of isotopes and radiation for the health and agriculture. So I will be focusing how this radiation is being used in. Uh, mutation breeding uh, for crop improvement for the benefit of the students many times when we say radiation we just uh, worried it is something very uh, unrelevant to us or it is very dangerous something like that but uh, if you say what is radiation radiation nothing but a energy it is a form of energy in movement so that's what we call as radiation so when we say ionizing radiation any radiation which has sufficient energy to remove an electron from an atom or a molecule is called ionizing radiation so you know this is an atom when you give some energy from outside and if these uh, revolving electrons are get ejected from this atom then that particular radiation is called ionizing radiation so always we use this such type of ionizing radiation in your mutation breeding experiments so the general procedure how it is being done you may be studied always generally we treat the seeds with uh, radiation and then go for m1 generation m2 and in m2 generation we look for variability and many times people think that whatever the variability we are getting in the m2 generation and if you are not getting just throw the population and we go for again for mutation breeding but um, now the things has changed now we can do a crossing of mutant into mutant mutant into cultivar mutant into mutant derivative mutant derivative into cultivar all this cross combination can be made to develop or derive a variety and all these cross combinations are also considered as the mutant variety as per the ia nomenclature so just for the student benefits uh, clarification that whatever mutants we are created from the m2 population is not only the mutants you can use any mutant lines in the cross breeding also also called as mutant or mutant variety so the general uh, success depends upon any mutation breeding depends upon appropriate mutagen or mutagenic dose effective dose large population size and screening method these are the some of the uh, uh important uh, aspect which you have to concentrate when you go for mutation breeding 
and uh, coming to the uh, contribution of these mutagens especially the physical mutagens in the development of crop varieties um, out of uh, 122 crop varieties released in india using mutation breeding maximum varieties are released through physical mutagen that is especially through gamma and x rays and the rest of the world also it is very high like it is uh, 118 and uh, so what uh, we want to say is that among the different combination of uh, physical and chemical physical mutagens are giving more are used to release more varieties throughout the world and this is again the pictorial representation that almost more than 90% of the varieties released in the mutation breeding experiments are through gamma rays and of course the other rays also being used for the same purpose sorry and some of the world's first mutant varieties released in india and because we have to take pride in that some of our uh, tnu varieties like pigeon pea co3 black gram co4 and cow pb16 mung bean tap7 these are some of the pulse crops released in 1970s uh, the first uh, mutant varieties if you see this uh, mutagen used are also maximum they are all physical mutagen you can say this starting from x rays thermal neutron gamma rays again gamma rays so what i want to say is that uh, this physical mutagen has contributed uh, in the development of varieties since 1970s and 80s if you see the number of varieties released in india using physical mutagen or a combination of chemicals also we have released almost 122 varieties using this mutation breeding and the rest of the world uh, this is the 29th second is bangladesh followed by pakistan so still this number can be more because much of the mutant varieties are not documented in the literature properly coming to the Uh, new mutagen that is new physical mutagen available for uh, radiation because many times we know that gamma rays which is derived from the cobalt 60s is used as a uh, physical mutagen that is what being taught in the classrooms but now lot of advancement has happened in the radiation physics now we can use diverse source of radiations which can be used in place of in replacement of gamma rays how it is advantage over the gamma rays that is what i just want to share with students friends and uh, of course we have now electron beam ion beam radiations and space radiations so just you can see uh, earlier we are using x rays and gamma rays this is what we a general radiation now we have electrons and we have protons that is positive ions the positive ions can be of anything like it can be helium carbon neon uh, silicon argon so these charged particles can also be used as a radiation Uh, for uh, radiating the seeds so you may be wondering how this is all be generated these are all generated using accelerators that is uh, there's a uh, kind of instrument or a machine which can accelerate this type of negative or positive ions to uh, speed of light and so that it can hit the target so this is what uh, new uh, radiations what right now we are having to for use in mutation so if you see uh, what is that uh, ions ions can be positively or negatively charged so that uh, picture which i am shown here if you, uh, one single uh, uh, negative ions gone then it is called negative ion same way for positive ion so these electrons or positively charged ions can be accelerated at a high speed around 20 to 80% of the light uh, and then it can be used to radiate the target cell so that is what we call it as ion uh, radiation that is ion beam radiation so how it differs from gamma rays so it differs from x rays and gamma rays in that ion beams have much high linear energy transfer when we are radiating any seeds the radiation deposits energy in the seed that is how it creates the damage so gamma rays deposits less energy whereas this type of radiation deposit more energy so more the energy more the damage more damage leads to more frequency of mutation this is the basic so again i want to show how different this uh, gamma rays are called a low and low lt that is low energy transfer radiations and the, the ion beams or electron beams are called as high lt radiations you can see that uh, equal doses of different types of radiation do not produce equal biological effect so that's what i explained to you gamma ray and ion beam cannot produce same biological effect because of its different properties so you can see the how the gamma rays irradiate a particular cell the spur is distributed throughout the cell that means more background damages can happen in gamma rays that is low lt radiation it spread throughout the cell whereas in high lt radiation the moment of the uh, radiation is given in a particular path and its deposition of energy is also very uh, specific so the background 
very uh, damage is very less in compared to the low uh, low LET radiations. That means high background variations cannot happen in the high LET radiations. So what we are trying to explain is that linear energy transfer, that is the energy deposited on the target material when ionizing radiation particle pass through it. That is when a radiation is having high LET, that is linear energy transfer, that is going to cause more damage. So for low LET radiations like X-rays and gamma rays, relative biological effect is proportional to the LET. Suppose if, we are, if, we are, if when you are using low LET radiation, then the biological effect will also be less. For same way for high LET radiation, the relative biological effect will be more. So it will be, you will have more variations. And coming to the energy uh, optimum LET, the 100 kilo electron volt per micrometer is the optimum LET uh, for a given radiation which can cause double strand break. You can see the X-rays and gamma rays, the ionization is happening in a very uh, far away places. Whereas in case of high energy radiations, the ionization events are happening at 50, uh, 50 Armstrong level or 20 Armstrong level, which can have capacity to break both the strands. So for the, to put it in a simple way for understanding of the students, so if you want to compare gamma rays and the ion beams, uh, both are ionizing radiations, yes. Of course, the linear energy transfer is, you can see it's in gamma rays, it's only 0.2 kilo electron volts per micrometer. That is a point, that much small amount of energy is only deposited in the seeds. The same with ion beams, you can see the amount of energy deposited is 10 to 1000 uh, keV per micrometer or even higher. So this is how the difference between gamma rays and the high energy beams which can deposit more energy in the seeds or the biological material. And coming to the relative biological effectiveness, gamma rays it is lower but still we are using. And if you see the relative biological effectiveness, it is very high in case of ion beams and electron beams. Absorbed dose rate low because here the uh, 60 gray per second is being the maximum it can use, but it can go very high in case of ion beam. Source, if you see the source of gamma rays, mostly it is radioisotopes, whereas in case of these ion beams, these are all accelerators. Accelerators are nothing but a machine which can accelerate the ions. So it can be, it depends upon the electricity and magnetic field. So it can be switch on and off can be done in case of our accelerator. Whereas the radioisotopes, the radiations are continuous in nature. So there we cannot make any on and off mechanism. So that's what written here. So it's on and off, no and yes here. Mutation frequency low and here it is very high because of the relative biological effectiveness. Mutation spectrum, they are found reported to be very wide in case of ion beams. And the large DNA alteration can be possible in ion beams compared to gamma rays. So this is a kind of uh, setup uh, we have in our uh, labs where the samples are kept in a small cavity and they are used in the ion beam radiation especially the proton beam radiation can be treated as uh, treat the seeds like this in a small cavities like this and we go for uh, then the general procedure is same for m1 m2 what we are doing regularly and these are some of the mutants which we have developed through this electron beam in black gram you can see the uh, dwarf uh, type which has been induced through electron beam and similarly, the plant type change uh, the other side. And the, uh, normal, now many times we have we saw that uh, radiation induces uh, dwarfness, but in this case, the radiation has induced the tallness also. So as you can see, this is a PU31 black gram variety. It's very dwarf type. And through uh, electron beam, we have induced the tall plant type also. So this in field condition, you can see the how the tall mutants are grown adjacently to the parent type. And uh, some other of the uh, electron beam induced mutants in mung bean uh, because why I am showing these mutants because these are electron beam induced mutants not through gamma and these electron beams we have started using from 2016-15 onwards so we got some good mutants just I want for the show that the, what are the types of mutants we are getting through this type of new radiations and uh, like early maturity part, uh, part color and uh, part shape uh, size and, uh, yellow seed coat yellow part color and then seed size also and here one uh, mutant we got uh, mite tolerant and nowadays the mite insect is also a very problem in the mung bean and black gram so we, we got one mite tolerant uh, mutant also in the power field and this is the large seed mutant which we uh, generated to through electron beam 
and this is one of the extra early mutant uh, like we have developed in mung bean normally the mung bean we have 60 days this matures in almost 50 to 55 days uh, we have developed through electron beam and uh, even 48 days also we have and some of the other uh, uh, academic interest mutants like normally the, we have trifoliate leaves whether we can see the pentafoliate leaves uh, in the mung bean the serrated leaf shapes in the mung bean mutant and this is one of the uh, recently we got one unique mutant in the uh, electron beam the petioles normally the petiole you have you can see how the normal petiole is very long you know, the plant here the petiole is completely lost or rudimentary in nature and this is true breeding and we are uh, uh, using it for uh, our genetic analysis now this is a part which uh, in the part you can see the cowpea plant without any petiole and of course a lot of seed color variations and seed size variations also created through this uh, electron beam and uh, this is the aphid bond cowpea cowpea aphid bond mosaic virus uh, tolerant but uh, resistant mutant we identified uh, this is the susceptible one and this is the resistant mutant which we have in the field and very recently uh, we started working for the maruka tolerance because in uh, literature if you go through mutation breeding there are lot of literatures a uh, lot of uh, work has been done for disease resistance not much reports are for available for insect resistance so this maruka is a very uh, menace in this cowpea and other pulses so we got one international project and uh, we started working uh, this uh, maruka tolerance mutation breeding and uh, through uh, our gamma radiation only we got uh, maruka tolerant line uh, in m2 population so you can compare the uh, kind of damage in the parent and the mutant the same way in the field also you can see the extent of damage created in the uh, field condition the percent part damage is only 28% in the mutant whereas it is up to 80% in the parent so the, the, we have identified uh, another uh, three mutants this is another uh, this is single plant yield of the uh, mutant and the parent just to show how it is tolerant and this is a closer view of the mutant part damage you can see again this is the field view this is the parent uh, where you can see the damage and the uh, and the mutant which is the damage is very less apart from the disease and the insect we do got some uh, biochemical mutants like oligosaccharides which is responsible for flatulence in black gram we do got some mutant uh, which is having almost reduced uh, this uh, oligosaccharide content the parent is having almost 58% oligosaccharide whereas the, uh, some of the mutants are having 50% are even lesser the oligosaccharide content compared to the parent so such type of biochemical uh, mutants can also be identified and we are just tracking okay okay it's coming so through uh, through development of this genetic variability and uh, through the recombination breeding we have developed almost 24 pulse crop varieties so the because we are not the regular agriculture university because we are uh, uh, you know that our institute mostly works on the radiation and uh, it is used for the different purpose but still we are focusing on mutation breeding and through this we have developed 24 pulse club varieties 9 in mung bean 8 in urad bean 5 in pigeon pea 2 in cow pea so these are the list of uh, variety i need not to read this thing and recently this year we have released uh, one mung bean trambeer aishur mung bean trcm 147 uh, this is very high yielding suitable for summer cultivation large seed size more than 5 grams uh, under seed weight and it is resistant to yellow mosaic disease and this is recommended for karnataka and uh, this is another variety list for karnataka uh, again why am it resistant large seeds and suitable for summer cultivation and uh, two more varieties this year again we released in uh, madhya pradesh tju339 and tju130 both black gram varieties are uh, high yielding almost uh, 15 quintals per hectare and uh, the both are both varieties are resistant to some of the important diseases of black gram like yellow mosaic and powdery mildew and uh, this year this 2023 only these uh, four varieties we got released mm -hmm. and this, this slide i just want to share with the students mm -hmm. so not only we should not focus on the direct mutants whenever possible we should cross these mutants with other genotypes or other mutants so what our experience shows that such type of crossings give more recombinants where you have the chance to identify better uh, yielding plants so this our uh, black gram variety is released from our institute i'm just showing the pedigree the red indicates the either it's a mutant variety or the mutant when we are using in cross breeding program 
resulting in a very good variety. So this is what uh, just I want to share. So we should not focus only on the direct mutant. We should also use it in crossbreeding program. And this is one of the examples of direct mutant in cowpea we have in our institute released in 2018, TC901, released for northern part of the country, suitable for summer cultivation. It matures in uh, 70 days. This is the uh, gamma ray induced uh, direct mutant from one of the EC exotic culture, 394763. And of course, uh, another example from TNAU, this uh, ADT7, rice swallow black gram. Uh, developed through mutation breeding uh, funded by Board of Research in Nuclear Sciences. And this variety has been already released, uh, that's what I was told. Uh, so this, this is a mutant variety again through gamma rays, uh, released for rice fuller cultivation. Again, the other characteristics of this uh, ADT7 is shown here. It is also shown to be good battery quality and uh, uh, highly suitable for rice fuller condition released from TNAU. And uh, we have another uh, very good work in Hasgram carried out under the BRNS in uh, TNAU. Here, the, this uh, horse gram is highly photosensitive. And uh, so here, we want to induce photo insensitive uh, in this horse gram, so, uh, as well as early flowering. So we got almost 15 days early compared to the parent, as well as photo insensitive mutants also developed uh, in this horse gram. Not only photo insensitive mutants we got, we got high yielding mutants. Many times, when we say high yielding mutants, it is contributed through increase in branches, increase in pod number and uh, seeds per pod. You can see the kind of parent uh, plant type and the mutant plant type. Almost the uh, average yield of the parent is 32 grams per plant, whereas in case of horse gram, this 120 gram plants, the kind of extent of variability created for this uh, the quantitative traits also possible through uh, mutation breeding. That is the reason I have kept this slide. And in another uh, variety, uh, Crida 1-18R, again, we got a very high yielding mutant. The parent, we have 25 gram, whereas in the mutant, we have 60 grams per plant. So this is another uh, example from, again, from TNAU, uh, where we have MD1 uh, vegetable type cluster bean. It grows very tall in uh, Karif season, and we, we went with uh, gamma ray and electron beam irradiation. And uh, you got very dwarf mutants, very good dwarf mutants. Only the internodal region has been reduced, and the number of parts seems to be same as far, on par with the parents. So I think the, uh, again, this mutant is from our institute. We also simultaneously worked with this MD1, and we got high yielding mutant. You can see the kind of clustering uh, arrangement of the parts in the mutant you can see in the mutant. And I think uh, I just want to have this conclusion. Uh, this induced mutation stays an efficient plant breeding towards uh, method towards pulse improvement. And we should use these uh, newer radiation, such as electron beam and ion beam, can be utilized as a mutagen to create novel genetic resources. And these mutants are also invaluable resources for genomic, uh, for uh, reverse and forward genetics. I have not kept much of uh, work on this area because I know the time will be very constant here. So I just focus only on the uh, regular mutation bidding uh, work, what we are doing, and the results of those things. And uh, the take home message is that the student uh, as well as teacher, when we are planning for mutation bidding next time, apart from gamma rays, you also collaborate with us to do such type of uh, newer radiations like electron beam and ion beam, and you see how the genetic variability is created in your population so that uh, a good thesis can also. Already, uh, I think uh, four or five students from TNU has worked on uh, this electron beam and other radiation. They have completed their master's and PhD thesis. And I am very happy to aware that this year for Pungal, Two of uh, mutant variety from TNU is going to be released. I told that cluster bean and uh, one rice varieties, which are the direct mutant of gamma rays. So are going to be released in the coming Pongal, which means that mutation breeding is playing a kind of uh, a role still in this era of genomics and genome editing. So that is a point I want to say to the student people. Just don't carry it away by the newer method. You do aware of the newer method. Wherever possible, you would use the newer method, but don't forget the important tools like mutation bidding and recombination bidding in your regular bidding program. That's my uh, advice to the young, youngsters. Thank you very much.